Hey, it's Jackie and welcome back to my channel for this cottagecore inspired makeup and hair look. Recently I've been doing a lot of really fun photo shoots with Lost Lands Collections. They are a fantasy photography duo and I got a lot of requests to recreate this uh, fairy tale maiden look I did. So that's what we're doing today and I'm working with the artistic makeup brand CC Cosmetics. So think gold compacts, floral design, every step will be made even more ethereal. So I hope you guys enjoy. If you do, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more pop culture tutorials. And on my eyes, I'll be using the Alice in Wonderland palette, which I think is perfect because I was reading a fairy tale book when I was shooting these shots. Let's get started with the makeup and then we'll move on to the hair. For skin, I've already prepped and my take on the cottagecore look is an ethereal glam makeup. So I've done several barely there like Kira Knightley inspired looks, so I'll have those linked if that's what you're looking for, but I personally love to wear a bit more makeup, especially when I'm being photographed. Prepping with the Palace Identity Color Correcting Primer. This uses a variety of plant extracts and it comes in different shades. I'm using pink, which is for fair to light skin with dullness or uneven skin tone. And whether you use a moisturizer or a primer or both, making sure the skin is really hydrated is a key step for making sure that the um, foundation or concealer really sits nicely on the skin. This is the Divine Horse BB Cushion Foundation, also from ZC's Palace Identity Collection. Look how beautiful this compact is, and I forgot about cushion foundations. I'm so used to using a stippling brush all over the skin, but this is a really nice process. It's rich and moisturizing for long-lasting moisture to the skin. Favorite ZC product is this powder. I've hit pan on it, I use it almost every day to set my face. So I was really excited that they have the new Palace Identity Reindeer Loose Powder, as well as this Hippograph Transparent Compact Powder since I liked the first formula so much. So I tried out both and I decided to go with the Loose Translucent Powder. This looks like something out of a fairy tale vanity and these products, you can get them on Amazon. So everything will be listed and linked down below. And let me know in the comments which product you thought was the most eye-catching. I barely went with any bronzer for this look and I'm pretty pale right now, but whenever I'm getting photographed, I like to add a bit more dimension. So I applied a very subtle matte bronzer over my forehead, under my cheekbones, under the jawline, and my go-to nose contour is accenting the natural divot fading from above my nostrils. And then I will kind of gradually bring that up, fade above the tip of my nose, and then bring in a bit more structure between my brows going into my nose bridge. I use barely any product and then blend in with my finger, and I've always preferred contouring with powder, at least for the nose contour. I find it's really easy to apply too much cream product and then have a hard time blending out, so that's why I like to go in with minimal powder product. This Palace Identity Peony Blush is absolutely stunning. I love this design, it's a beautiful shade and you just swirl it all together and it's very corally, brightens up the face. Again, with a cottagecore or fairy look, anything ethereal really, I think if there's one place you can add more color, it would be the blush. So apply to the high points of the cheeks, blend up and down to build the color. I love to dust from the bottom of the chin and sweep upwards, it gives a nice harmonious glow. For brows, let's fill in with the Palace Identity Delicate Eyebrow Pencil and this is beautiful. Look at this circle detailing. It reminds me of my favorite pair of earrings I got from Croatia. For the shape, I'm working with my natural brow, but I do like to bring the head of the brow up a bit higher, and then this helps um, straighten out the arch for a youthful appearance. I create upward strokes at the head like you just saw, and then I'll work with the tail strands sweeping outwards and upwards, and I love that this has a spoolie to blend in. Just look at how soft and natural these brows look, and I did fill in quite a bit. For the eyes, hello Alice in Wonderland. Check out this gorgeous design. You can see we have glitter in this palette. It's very entertaining. And I love these beautiful pinky peach shades. And as I mentioned at the beginning, this is like my go-to makeup routine. So after my brows are filled, I'll take a medium tone shade and bring it from my inner corner, blend it upwards in a slightly exaggerated crease shape, and then blend outwards into a soft V. Here I'm using a dusty rose that is pulling a bit warmer on camera, but I'll do these steps whether I'm using a cool tone brown, warm brown, peachy shades, whatever the tone I want the base look to be. And then all over the lid, I'm using a really beautiful ethereal shimmery shade for some sparkle. Deepening up the inner and outer corner to bring in more dimension so the eye look doesn't look flat. 
and touching up the crease so it's an exaggerated rounded shape and then really blending out so everything is really soft and then when we apply lashes this is all going to look very subtle especially if you're taking photos outside things appear a bit more muted so it really won't look all that intense when we're finished and of course you can use whatever products you have in your collection to create this look but hopefully seeing some of these beautiful pieces might show you this new gorgeous makeup brand Apply a matte shade under the tear duct and outer corner and then I like to bring in a shimmery bronze right through the middle of the eye. And ZC has several Alice in Wonderland eyeshadow palettes. There's one that's Queen of Hearts inspired, this Alice palette and then the Alice in Flamingo palette which I used because we have soft and pretty bridal or everyday shades that I thought would work perfect for this look. For eyeliner, this is the Palace Identity Fairy Deer Liquid Eyeliner and I love this type of applicator. And instead of going with black, I went with brown so it's a bit softer. I want to still be able to see my lid when I'm looking forward and I also dot along the bottom lashes to help fill them in without creating a harsh line. Finally, mascara. This is the Black Mascara by ZC, and I love what this looks like on its own, but I was wearing some fluttery falsies in the photo shoot. This look is pretty either way. Without lashes, I feel like it gives more of a cottagecore look, but with falsies, it's more doll-like and has a fantasy element to it. So let me know what you like best. ZC has a bunch of really fun colored mascaras, so if you do want to go with something more natural like light brown, they have that. And I also wore the purple mascara for my latest aquamarine tutorial. Next we have the Palace Identity Golden Dragon Lipstick. I love how intricate these are and I have a couple really pretty red lipsticks from this collection, but they do have some new shades. First using a reddish brown to create more dimension by slightly overlining my lips. I've been trying to go with my natural lip shape more often, so instead of like a full lip liner, I'm just using two lipsticks for more dimension. And then we have this really pretty dusty rose nude that goes beautifully with this corset colors. I love this lip combo and the dusty rose on the eye and lip looks really nice and then we have some coral to the cheek to really brighten up the face. And on this photo on screen by Lost Lands Collections, I did use this exact lipstick. So I went with more of a corally red. This is the Picasso lipstick. Love this packaging and I dabbed it along the inner portion of the lip and it's quite bright. So just a touch of it. Adding a liquid highlighter to the cheeks and tip of the nose always helps the skin appear more like skin, especially in photos. And there is my go-to ethereal makeup look. It's romantic, a bit doll-like. And for the fairy tale inspired hairstyle, just add heat protectant. And this should come as no surprise, but if you've watched my channel for a while, I use this curling wand all the time. It's my favorite. It's by Bedhead. It's like 30 bucks, and I've used it in so many different videos, especially anything romantic like Elizabeth Swan's Bridal Updo, Pride and Prejudice, Phantom of the Opera. Got a ton of use out of this, um, but I did break the tip off by accident, if you can tell. And my tip is to section your hair off in half, but not really do it like layer by layer because the curls will group together a bit too much. So just pick up small piece by small piece a little bit randomly, wrap around the base of the curling iron. And then when you release it, if you have time, I would suggest pin curling each of these, but it takes forever. So only if you have a lot of time on your hands. Otherwise, when you drop the curl, Grab it in your hand and then scrunch it up and down as it's cooling. So this will keep its shape and soften up the curl. These curls remind me of Catherine Pierce from The Vampire Diaries, except I definitely would pin curl to get that exact look. Now that we have all the curls in place and I've curled away from my face this whole time, Take a high hold hairspray, flip your head upside down and spritz going upwards, scrunch again to really give that volume. And I like to tease some of those top curls so that it's fluffy and moves nicely. Finally, this is a hack I do when I want more volume up top because my hair is so long and cut in one length. 
take a four clip weft of extensions and then I'll fold it in half, clip two of the clips into the hair and then braid into a simple braid and clip in with the remaining two clips. Very low on your head, just above your neck so that your hair can go all the way over the clip and it won't show. And then bring that braid behind your ear through the curls and pin to the other side like it's a headband. Take a couple curls, pin upwards so you have that volume and you can leave it like this and have a crown braid or use it as a base for some flower detail. The way the hair sits in a braid gives great hold for little branches or flowers. Here's the amount of flowers I had for the first time around. And now we'll look at behind the scenes of this shoot. I did a full vlog of my experience. We did several different fairy tale looks at different beautiful locations. So be sure to check it out if you like my travel vlogs. And Lost Lands Collections gifted me this stunning corset by French Meadows. So you can get these corsets. I will also have them linked down below and they are such a work of art. Be sure to follow me and Lost Lands Collections on Instagram for more photo shoots like this. And if you want to shop these gorgeous makeup products, everything will be linked down below. You can get a lot of ZC products on Amazon as I mentioned. So thank you ZC for working with me on this video. I hope you guys like my take on a fairy tale esque makeup look that I've been wearing a lot recently as well as very aesthetically pleasing products. If you're looking for more whimsical tutorials, check out the Aquamarine Mermaid video I did. Gotta have a mermaid video every year. And I also mentioned using this as bridal inspiration. I think it's a really nice look, so if you want more bridal tutorials, I did Priscilla Presley and Ariana Grande's makeup looks, and those are great for inspiration as well. So I hope you'll keep on watching, and I'll see you in my next video.